I thought we'd have some fun today and just look at multiband antennas because if you've got a small backyard or a small garden, uh, you know, it's nothing like just having something simple that works. So we'll do we'll do a multiband vertical and a multiband dipole, and we're going to talk traps to start with, and then we'll talk about end effect and non-trap versions. Okay, so it's quite a lot of detail, but it's quite good fun. I'll keep it short if I can. So if you take a dipole, uh, you know we've got our little apple tree here, and we're going to put a dipole, uh, you know, from there to there you know a bit of paracord or something to hold it time and then we'll bring some coax down to, to the ground and, that, and how that works is that the coax itself if you guess you didn't know uh, has got a braid around the outside and then we've got this pvc or, or jacket and, that, and that's the coax so one side of the coax is basically going that way and the other side of the coax is basically going that way and that would be a mono band dipole you know it would work for the frequency uh, that we're after so for the 20 meter band it would be roughly five meters long each leg and that would be it now the thing is we have something called harmonics so if this was 40 meters now so in other words 40 meters if this is a 40 meter antenna each of these legs would be roughly 10 meters or 30 something feet long a dipole and a vertical resonates not only on its fundamental frequency so that'd be 40 meters but three times the amount. I'll just cover one thing before we get into the traps and everything else. We've got our 10 meter legs, 40 meters, all right? Um, 10 meters long, and it's resonant, let's say it's 7.1 megahertz. But if you multiply that by, by, by three, we end up with 21.3 because dipoles and verticals are uh, resonant at um, three times the fundamental. However, each of these is a quarter of a wavelength long. Bearing in mind a sine wave, you know, sine wave looks like, well, not like that. <laughs> it kind of looks like that, sine wave. Each, that's a quarter, there's a quarter, there's a quarter, because four quarters is one. If this is resonant also on the 15 meter band, that means if we split this into three, we will get not quite a whole sine wave here. So we'll have basically that is a quarter wave, that is a quarter wave, and we're at the end there, and that is a quarter wave as well. But the end effect is only happening and only being shortened once. It's not being shortened here and here like it is on 40 meters, which is at the end. So therefore, instead of being 21.3, we'll find it's about 21.6. I say that for completeness, because if you ever want 40 meters to be resonant on also 15 meters, you can apply a really simple trick. And that simple trick is really make that a little bit shorter and fold the end back, right? A little bit more, maybe. You fold it back about three feet, all right? And, and compensate for the whole thing. Now, what you've got is something that without going into a whole chapter and verse, you will find it resonant on seven point, whatever you want and 21.03 okay so now we can take our dipole and make it multi-band by using something called a trap and how that works and we'll go back to our 40 meter dipole let's say that's 40 meters there and there inverted v all right and we can put make this 20 and 40 by putting a something called a trap in here and here and what a trap does, it basically performs a hard stop right here. So 20 megahertz will come, uh, sorry, 14 megahertz, 20 meter band will come along and it will see the end of the antenna there, not here. Whereas 40 meters come along, it'll bypass this, it'll go, oh, I don't care about that. And it'll get to the end, there's 40, there's 20. And you can make as many of these as you want. You could get a six band trap dipole. And that would have five traps, one per 10 meters, 12, 15, 20, 30 even, and then let 40 through all the way. Now, a trap, which is basically a coil of wire and a capacitor, right? Look it up, <laughs> right? A trap has some loss, depending how it's made, it doesn't have to be a lot of loss. But if you have a multi-band, 
trap dipole you can get a little bit one or two db by the time you get to the end on 40 meters or 80 you know it might be even more right so that's a trap and you can have multiple traps along the way right so if that's a trap dipole what's a fan dipole so a fan dipole is kind of similar i've made a few fans in my time where you'll get uh, 40 meters here off the same feed point right so here's your coax we've got the braid going over this way and you've got the center of the coax going this way by the way all these need a choke right ferrite core two ferrite cores three or four turns near the feed point so that's 40 meters but you can also do 20 as well and i've i've done it like this that's about half the size roughly and i used um little plastic rings or something to hold these in place it blows around in the wind that's all and then if you use the fold back trick as well on 40 meters here you'll then have 40 and 15 and 20. Now, if you really wanted you can add another little baby element down here for 10 meters or cb or whatever all right and now you and then you've got 10 meters as well so that is a fan dipole now i had uh, there's 10. i had an email this morning kind of a, a pre c pre pre-sales email and he watched one of my videos he says how the hell <laughs> Do the uh, this is the right element selected, right? Is there some sort of magic? Is there no relays or anything? So what is a DX Commander? It's basically a multi-band fan vertical, if you like. So how that works, we've got a single, some sort of telescopic pole or whatever else. And we take our coax, as we discussed earlier on, there and the braid. And we send this up up our elements and what we can do we can have like a fan dipole we could have multiple elements so we could have that could be 40 then we could have 20 here and we could have you know 10 there and whatever you can stack these this one of course we can do the trick with the fold over so that's 40 and 15 and what happens is as the and that's on a shared sort of driven plate if you know what i mean that so the braid is going to ground right where we've got well, some radials. And if you know, we've spent quite a lot of time investigating radials and I've settled on about two meters long, about seven feet for the radials and about 20 or 30 of them. So it's nice and quick and short. Right, what actually happens? The RF comes along the coax, so it's 17 meters, all right? It comes along the coax and it sees, it just actually sees one element. It sees the 17 meter element and just wants to go up it, right? The reason is, is that all the other, all the other elements are actually the wrong, completely the wrong impedance, right? It's high, normally high impedance. But the 50 ohm one, the one or close to 50 ohm, the 17 meter one, whoosh, up it goes. Now with a fan, and it, so it's auto magic, right? <laughs> it literally is automatic. I mean, who would have thought of that? It's amazing, isn't it? Um, now, if you do the modeling, I won't bother showing you right now, but the, on the modeling, you can actually see that all the elements radiate a little bit, but the main radiation is coming off the element in question. So for instance, on the 40 meter element, which is normally the longest element on a DX Commander or, or a, you know, some sort of fan vertical that you may have made, all the other elements will absorb some of the energy that is being radiated and then immediately it's got nowhere to go it re-radiates it so if you compare a single vertical or a fan vertical you'll find that um adding all the energy up you get the same amount of energy going out the door right? because the thing is i'm really into easy to build easy to understand antennas i like a coax fed antenna that i don't have to think about so i'm generally into 50 ohms you can make some really fancy stuff by the way if you are 
you know, an engineer and you've got an electronics background and you know about tuned circuits and capacitors and inductors and everything else, you can do all sorts of things with relays and matching circuits and everything else. I like to think simple. So a fan dipole to me is just beautiful and elegant. It just works. I know what's going on. Right? The trouble is you can buy some of these commercially made antennas, you know, with sticks coming out of them and coils and you've got no idea what actually what's going on. You've got no idea. You know, it kind of radiates. All right. How well? I don't know. Probably quite well, but you just don't know what's going on. As Tom, a friend of mine, M0 RMY, he coined the term when he finally sort of saw, he, he built his own DX commander, and he called it visual physics. You can see that the 17 metre band, you can see the element. It's a little bit shorter than 20, and it's a little bit longer than 15, for instance. You just see it, it's visual physics. So, now, unless you know of another way, commercially or homebrew, to multi-band simply an antenna, I think we've either got fan dipoles or fan verticals, whatever you want to call them, and we've got traps. Well, there is one other way. Okay, so if dipoles and verticals resonate on the effectively the third harmonic, it's not actually, it's every other harmonic. It's all the odd harmonics. So if you have an antenna, a vertical or a dipole that resonates on 7.1 megahertz, the, the second harmonic would be 14.2. It will not work there. The reason I'm coming through this forest area here is to show you an antenna called a delta loop. If a dipole and a vertical resonates on every other harmonic, every odd harmonic, so three, five, nine, eleven, and so on, a delta loop, well, an, any loop, so you've now got a four to one balance, and I've got one here and I'll show you, a four to one balance, and you put a continuous loop all the way around, you'll find that will resonate on every harmonic. So that's a natural multi band antenna. So if you build one for 40, you will get 20, 15 and 10. And with your ATU button, normally you get a bit more as well. So this happens to be a triangle and it is about oh, two and a half, three meters off the ground. I don't know, nine foot, if that. So there we are, loops are already multi-banded. It's fantastic, isn't it? And they're generally cut at one wavelength. All right, so maybe it'll whisk her under, but if you've got, um, because PVC wire has something called a velocity factor. If it was bare copper wire, it would be a bit quicker, but weirdly enough, the electrons, the, 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 the wigglies, all right, go a little bit slower because you've got this PVC jacket. It's just as efficient, it's just a bit slower. So it means instead of making it 100%, you could probably make it at 95%. And I guessed that and got it cock on, actually. The spec was, I think, 41 meters, and I cut it at 38. And it is literally, on the 40 meter band, 20, 15, and 10, perfectly. And the other way out of the problem, and I, I got suckered into this actually years ago, is I bought, there's nothing wrong with what I'm about to tell you, an SG230 uh, smart tuner, right? And there are various smart tuners on the market, or a manual tuner, and you put it at the feed point, it's like a box of tricks. You square RF into it, and it goes, right, I've got a single element, and I've got this ATU at the bottom. And this is how marine chips do it as well. It will just clickety-click as all the relays and coils and inductors and everything go to work. It will find a perfect match. So it will match your coax to the antenna via the matching circuit, the box of tricks at the bottom. Smart tune, SG230. But it bypasses the science of what the hell we're doing, but it's just handy, right? And um, so, for instance, if I lived in an apartment and I had no other way out of the problem, I'd probably buy another SG230. I think it's good for 200 watts. So maybe not so good for me. CG5000 I also had, which was good for 500 watts, maybe 1,000 watts, I can't remember. Both of these blew up when we got hit by lightning, by the way. But that's the way out of the problem. Just put in a big tuner, automatic tuner at the base. And finally, the other way, and I wasn't going to mention this because it's a bit fiddly, but I loved it when I had it. Um, I've got an AT4K, massive balance tuner. It got given to me, actually, by an American company when I did a deal years ago. 
In fact, Colin in Scotland, he's got it at the moment. He's running it on his doublet. And that's a balanced tuner. So, you, you know, ladder line, you know, the where you've got two lines held together, you know, some open wire feed or whatever else. You can basically put any length dipole, effectively, up in the trees, feed it with a balanced line, and you have this tuner. I mean, it's a bit of a hassle, right? The band changes. You've got to remember, it's uh, that one's 24, this one's 138. And I need to wind this to so it says 47, you know, and that'll be 40 meters. You're never quite sure where your lobes are because if it's too long, you get a funny pattern. You can get clover leaves, multiple clover leaves, interwind clover leaves, and everything else, particularly on the high bands. But for a low band antenna, like 160 to 40, a balanced tuner with balanced line, okay, and a nicely made doublet. Uh, works a treat and I've made a couple of doublets for customers actually because I made my own and somebody says well you make me one and somebody else wanted one in fact somebody called in the other day on that doublet that I made four or five years ago he said it works great I'll put a link to both the builds of the doublet down there because it's just interesting multi-bands all right if you've got experience with multi-bands very interested to hear what you've got to say about it commercially or homebrew I don't mind all right Anyway, have a lovely day. I'm busy. I'll see you later. Enjoy your radio. Bye for now.